because yesterday we took the story about the Nigerian girl, Toby Amuson, who actually uh, broke world record. We're so happy about this championship, not just because she won, but because of all the negative news in our news in the past years. And Nigerians are excited and happy to have something to celebrate about. For those of you who haven't seen this, I'd like to show the clip to you. So she broke two world records yes, in one day. One now, the, the emotional part of that whole episode wasn't just about the win. It was when she was crying and they were playing the Nigerian yeah, national anthem. anthem. Mm -hmm. Everybody that I knew what cried while she was crying, because okay. I knew I cried. <laughs> because you feel that Nigeria is on a world stage. And, we, and, you know, it was so convenient to assume that she was trained in the U.S. But no, this girl was born and raised in Ijebu Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a girl that didn't get into U.S. until 2016. Mm -hmm. She went to Our Ladies of Apostles in Ijebu. That's, that's her alma mater. Her classmates were singing to her. So this is homegrown. Yes, she got better facilities to, um, to, to, to do better. But it's the same story with doctors mm. who leave Nigeria. In this facility, we all condemn. Mm -hmm. Oh, boss, where are schools? They don't have, they're not paying salaries. They're not doing this. This same university produced many of the doctors see abroad. So the point is... When we see this kind of good news, what does it mean to you as a mm. Nigerian? And I'd like to hear your thoughts on these ladies. So she got on the world stage with the African um, Youth Championship in 2013. Nine years, she's been at this. She's been steadfast. I'm say, taking the years because in between, anything could have happened. She could have become Doha citizen. Yeah, some are Bahrain citizens now, athletes. <laughs> Our athletes who say, you know, mm -hmm. the situation is just, is just frustrating, so I cannot do better here. They claim other countries. I see Nigerians who are now Saudians <laughs> because of athletic, you know, athletics, and they leave this country, but she stood <laughs> her ground. What will pay me now is for the Minister for Youth and Sports to come and say, you know, we made her. We know this woman or young lady, she's 25, is a Nigerian in her heart. Mm. She's not somebody anybody made do anything. Mm -hmm. She's a Nigerian who knows and loves this country. She stood her ground. When other countries, I know what they do, they come, they will offer you greener passes. They still offer her. Still offer her. Season, sure, she's but 2013 to 2020, that's nine whole years. Uh, she stood her way. Have... And in 2013, she won something. She had a gold medal in 2015, African Junior Athletics. She's always won. She's always said, thought, I would win for this country. She could have done anything else. For me, re seeing her and the anthem being played, I prayed for her. Mm. I thank her for forcing the world to remember this country for the greatness. Mm. Yes, something that sports just does for us. Yeah. See, sports and entertainment, it just takes you, just, unifies all, it just unifies and bonds everyone. Yeah. You know, you just imagine Absolutely. when the Super Eagles win something. You remember she's Christian or Muslim? No, 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 Nobody asks she's Christian. Nobody asks you where she's from. Nobody asks you to me until you mentioned yes. it now. She's Christian. She's Muslim. It doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. She's, she's just Nigerian. Even the, where she comes <laughs> from. Yes. Even where she comes from is secondary because it's later that people are telling us, oh, she's Egyptian. At first, it was just that Niger. This is who we are. We're so excited. I think talking about it, goosebumps all over my body. I, of course, we spent time with my children watching the videos. I wanted them to, you know, mm -hmm. see it, but also... You know, I'm a believer in positive affirmation. I'm a believer in the fact that, you know, when I was starting this show today, I didn't even really know how I was going to discuss this part, but I really just said I'm grateful to God that I'm on a journey. I don't understand what's going on on the projects I'm working on, but I'm grateful that I will go through that journey. And that's the way life is. So for me, it is the multiple lessons that this girl's journey um, um, carries. You know, she did a post far back and in 2016, she said, unknown now, but soon I will be unforgettable. Yep. I will persist until I succeed. Mm -hmm. That was pinned since 2016 yep. on her page. Mm -hmm. That's someone who knew that I would do whatever it takes to consistently to push through. And that is the spirit of Nigeria. And that, is, and that for me, mm. several failures mm. down the line, several failures. If we start listing the times when she was 11th, yes. the time when she was 19th, yeah. I mean, the time when she was 11th, 9th, before she got yeah. into where she could break the world record, there is a lesson here for every yeah. human we, being, not we, just Nigerians. As we also celebrate Ese Brume, who won the silver and the long jump.
Um, yeah. She's also someone that worth celebrating because it's not, it's not just about ha. Toby's Being good. success. She did a phenomenal job also. And these are Nigerian young women making us proud. And the, 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 the conversation really is about the lessons. Mm -hmm. you know, it's one thing to celebrate and then move on to the negative conversations and the mm -hmm. negative labeling of our country. But it's another thing to say, what do we learn? So this is, as I said earlier, that this girl went to just ne down next door to get body here. Mm -hmm. She went to school here and she won medals in worry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think twice. African yeah. championship. Here. She African won championship Africa. here. So yeah. she's somebody that built it's herself. Grown, grown, Somehow grown. she got an opportunity to travel. I, I couldn't get that story of how she, she went. She got a scholarship. She got a scholarship. Yeah, I didn't get that mm. So she got the scholarship because obviously she's good at what she's doing. Yes. And when she got there, she got a coach. She continued. And then and she was even running for her school, University yes. of Texas mm -hmm. in um, El Paso. Yeah? Yes. And, she's, and, and she did so well to the point where she is now. So we see the progress. Mm. And we're saying that no matter how hard things are. So those who are making it look like, just like you say, you're talking to your children, they're saying, mm -hmm. you are a Nigerian. I love that you she can did still. that. I'm, 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 I'm not done that. I'm, I'm not done that. I'm totally going to I'm, do it. After this to... show, mm -hmm. I'm going to my I'm, house. We're having we're a lecture to <laughs> yeah. on Toby Amosan and yes. her process. And I think it's a fantastic idea. I'm going to sit down with my kids today. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to do it too. Right Honourable Bajabia Miller went back to school and some have said that do your school in JJ, but no, he had to tweet mm. about it. Okay. And okay. people felt, why would you even tweet? Is it Pepe them or to inspire? Which is it are you doing? Which, which one are you doing? What are your thoughts on this? Let me start with you, BC. You don't bring food to a hungry man that you're not willing to share and then pass it through his nose and then walk away. That is wickedness. Um, as a leader, the first thing is to be sensitive to the plight of your people. What is happening with um, NLC, ASU strike, I would say it's not your fault personally. It's a collective, you know, the failure of government to do the needful. However, this is not the time to, to show it to us. Because if those schools you are going abroad to go and do the studies, if they did not sit up, if they did not do their standard, if they did not ensure that their people have access to that education, if they were on strike, as you are on strike here, you will not have an opportunity to go and study anything. So it's insensitivity on the part of our leaders to just do things anyhow without thinking about it twice. The way Nigerians are feeling right now, if I show this, mm. how would they see it? How would they interpret it? You can do that at your school quietly without letting us know. We don't need to know. His message itself had no problem. His message was to inspire people that regardless of your gray age, hair, yeah. regardless of your age, you must continue to learn. What he's doing is good. His intentions, good. Timing, terrible. Mm. Terrible timing. That's it. And you mentioned the name of the school. Baddest. <laughs> biggest mistake. Do you know, I, like Google, Google School of um, Kennedy. Kennedy. Our school of Kennedy. Mm. No, no, I know it's a school of government. It's an important school. Mm -hmm. But do you know how much, even if they gave him scholarship, mm -hmm. the basic he will still pay, he will still spend over $20,000. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying he spent it from government money because... We've seen his wife years back that she was like, she has her own money when she was wearing that um, um, designer designer. People were brazy the issue that this woman shouldn't look this lavish. You have a right to do it. But here is what I'm going to say. On Monday, we interviewed the um, ASU, president. ASU president. And he said something that I think our leaders are not paying attention to. We are mortgaging our future. We are paying the international people for a local problem. Yeah. Leadership in Nigeria, the Challenges of growth in Nigeria is a local, local problem. Mm. The American schools cannot teach you how to solve oh, leadership no problems problem. in Nigeria. Yeah, true. It is impossible. True, true. So yeah. you cannot learn anything from there that uh, can help you here. Uh, what you need here yeah. is to attend yeah, school, the show. listen to the professors in Nigeria yes. who understand and have studied leadership here that finish. will tell you what this is and our what problem. to do. Hey, this is our Kennedy solution. Kennedy cannot give you the solution. Let me, you know, we've not seen the Honorable Speaker and his several interventions beyond ASU. Even during the other protests, he comes in, he goes out to teach people. He's a handsome person. So we give him that. But you see this one. He did not do this one way at all. Yeah. And I thank God I did not talk before talking. <laughs> so that I will not seem like I'm talking everybody's mm -hmm. thoughts. Because that's what's his trending. Tope nailed it. I hope that our leaders understand that when you study abroad and they did not give you a problem to solve in sociology, 
you obviously pick societal problems yeah, and you analyze them handle. as your project study and all of that. America University, they have enough. But you are coming from a place where you will take your time to suggest. You have to travel in and back. They have at Kennedy School. The cheapest amount it will cost is forty thousand mm. dollars. It is most insensitive at this time of somebody of the speaker's personality that I have always respected. That you know is a very sensitive person. So pay that amount of money now and think self development is ripe now. Why not finish your speakership? I even show us. And you no, know, finish your speakership, leave office. No, he needs this for the speakership. No, now. he doesn't. That is living he needs this. He doesn't. You know. You people assume that, or people usually think that acquiring knowledge has to be within the four walls of an institution. You see that person standing by the roadside every day, has yeah. a wealth of knowledge, that yeah. when you need to know about roads, you go and see you that person him. by the roadside. True. If you are getting lost in Osho, do you know who to visit? Mm -hmm. hey, if you Thank need, you. If you, <laughs> True. you will Thank go to you. university, but you will not solve Osho the problem. Once exactly. You see those people in Osho, yeah. they Thank will you. let Stay you know how them. it runs. So you know, you can't go to universities over there and think you can solve all our problems mm. here. But the F1 tree hey, to actually post to pictures. 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 You get chest though. No, no, no. You get money. Right. They, they, they don't know. They're not feeling us. They don't know what we're going through. Yeah, they're they're saying. People were saying they this yesterday. Ah, they're not feeling us. The speaker has always posted everything he did online. We never had issues. So these pictures, he posted them. They are going at all at this time. Asu has been on strike. If you say it is by constituency, there are students in Surulere that are sitting at home right now, that are not in schools, and their parents are looking at you. Oh, you know, God, they used God. to say, we should leave the executive. We should go to our lawmakers in our constituencies yeah. that mm -hmm. the closest to us. To them. pressure the executive. To pressure the... And if you are not even available, you are right now in your Harvard mm. doing leadership and government. Rubbing it in How our face. How do they go to you? So Nigerians woke up and are worried about the free fall of Naira to the dollar in the parallel market. It's been widely reported to be trading for 710 Naira against the U.S. dollar. Hmm. Everybody's complaining and worried about what's going to happen to their businesses. Joining us to discuss more on this is an economic and financial expert, Mr. Tunde Olatunji. Good morning, sir. Good morning. We, from the reports we read today, within the NAFEX, within the system, Naira has strengthened to 430 to the dollar. But on the parallel market, it's 710 to the dollar. Mm -hmm. And Nigerians are confused because some don't even understand why we're having two various um, rates. Yes, yeah. So help us, for those who don't understand what this is about, help us understand it at that level before we even understand where we are going on this matter. Hmm. Well, um, uh, thank you. Um, one of the major challenges with Nigerian foreign exchange um, is the fact that um, over the years it's been very difficult to have a convergence of our exchange rates. So you have the black market rate um, different from that of the official window. And, you know, because the official window has not been able to adequately take up the demand of the Nigerians in terms of um, foreign exchange, a whole lot of um, demand has now shifted to the black market. So, um, despite the fact that the official window uh, gives you a cheaper rate, it cannot take care of the needs of the people. So, a whole lot of Nigerians resort to, to the black market to meet their demand. And this is a function of the fact that, number one, um, the Inflow of dollars into the Nigerian economy has dropped drastically. Um, and this is a reflection of the fact that Nigeria is not a producing nation in terms of what we need to put in the national market to earn foreign exchange. And at the same time, Naira is not also on high demand because we are not producing anything that is enough to make people want to demand for your goods right. and your currency. Please answer. Is this just a follow up to that? Is this just peculiar to Nigeria? These two different rates, two different markets, and obviously almost a very powerful informal um, sector. Yeah, it, it's not peculiar to Nigeria, uh, but it's prominent in Nigeria because of the fact that when you look at the size of the Nigerian economy, take for instance in Africa, this is the largest economy. And when you compare that with the potential of a country like Nigeria, you understand uh, why uh, whenever we have issues like this, 
you know, it, it has, it's going to have a much, much bigger impact on the people. Uh, um, um, it's, it's one of the peculiarities of the developing economies across the world. Uh, it, it's not peculiar to us as a nation. But then, uh, you know, we, 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 we have battled this for so long. Uh, it's been home for decades. And until we are able to address the structural deficiency in our economy, it may actually be practically difficult for us to come out of this uh, situation we find ourselves. What exactly is happening and how we can begin to tackle it, not just the government side, but also individuals. So you talked about structural uh, deficiencies that we need to address as soon as possible. And you mentioned a few, but are there other ones you think that the government is deliberately working on? to ensure that we can you know, strengthen the Naira? And how do you think ordinary Nigerians can play a role in helping this happen? Thank you very much. You know, in addressing this issue, uh, we cannot put it entirely on the doorstep of the government. For an economy to be functional and prosperous, the government must play its lead role, and the people must be willing to ensure that they give what it takes for their country to prosper and flourish. That is when you see an economy working. And I'll give you a simple example. You know, as an average Nigerian, what is our appetite for foreign goods? What is our appetite for the yeah. things we are not producing? Any nation that delights in consuming what it does not produce is doing so at its own peril, is doing so at its own risk. Thanks for staying with us. So, during the paper review, we discussed, uh, we took a story about Toby Amerson's victory and how her father admitted that he initially wanted her to focus on her education and he didn't think running or focus on athletics was the way for her, especially when we live in a country where those who engage in athletics are not always uh, pushed forward or get into the international stage. I was sharing with you that... Um, my, 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 my husband just came home and said, ah, all his friends are signing up their children for all this athletics, so uh, that's the head up, but there's one in this place in Magodo. We have to go and sign up our children. I said, what's the issue with athletics? <laughs> ah, this to be a good sort of thing. Go, in fact, all, the, all the summer schools now are now adding athletics to their, uh -uh. To their lineup. And I'm thinking, people are just so reactive in this country. You. What's your problem? <laughs> so everybody's thinking talent, talent. But in all the talent, should we still, how do you help a child? I mean, how does, does a parent... When the child is saying, I want this. And I say, no, you burn the shoes, you take the ball, you take everything. And you say, no, you must do, you must follow education. How do we know? How do we find a strike of balance? During the time of our own parents, mm. uh, they did the best they could do with the resources available to them, with the knowledge available to them. And that's what every parent does because you are a guardian. You want to be able to guide these children and you have experienced some things, you have seen some things with your society, and you don't want to guide them wrongly. You want them to be the best. Mm. But we forget most of the time that we do not have the blueprint of these children. Mm. Uh, they are full-blown souls and spirits by themselves, and they have their path, my sister. They have their path. So um, what we can begin to do is to, why we tell them that these are the basics, we should listen and pay attention to where their passion lies and the drive within. So what our parents did in the first place was to say, education is the key. You must go to school. You must do this. You must do that. Without really paying attention to those things that really interest the child. And some children were able to say, OK, this is what daddy says. I can't do this thing anymore. And they left that path and forgot about it. Some children are more insistent in their will to say, eh, but I can do both. And sometimes they go through the way of disobedience. Now, concerning this particular person, that, um, Toby Amuson, and how the dynamics of her own family, I think, luckily for her, she had a mother that understood and they were able to do it behind the father's back until yeah. she got to where... Mm -hmm. I have a personal story with my son. My son has always wanted to play football. But, you know, you see my son, I just feel like, mm, what football is he going to play? And he would insist... I took him instead to Taekwondo, like, I just need him to be firmer and stronger. He would do it because I put him there. And he, that one thing with him is he will do his best. Yeah. Once he starts, he will try and do his best. His uncle came one time and just took him to a football club. And before we knew it, the first day we went to go and pick him up, I always say this story, it makes me laugh every time. 
We went to pick him up. He started, he had joined this club. And we went to pick Foge up. And we were now looking on the bench for, because we definitely did not expect him to be playing. We were <laughs> looking at the bench to see our son with this. Instead, we were now head on the field. Foge, pass it for her. And when we left, parents were hailing us. Your child plays Imagine. football. Imagine. I'm like, Really? Is that great? <laughs> and the father now made a point of duty to be dropping him every time. And every time he comes, he says, Do you know Pride. another parent now told me that this boy is very good. The boy was insistent on what he wanted. Mm. And he took his uncle coming from the outside to, you know, take that. Yeah. So parents should also listen to what their children's passions are. Sometimes mm. we think they may be too young. They don't know what they, they want. Mm. But as long as it's not something that will hurt them physically or mentally or emotionally, we can try and encourage them and be there to see how it affects them. So we seem to think that it's easy for parents to make these choices for you or that it's just easy when they push you this way or that way, that they don't have times when they second guess their decisions or when they even doubt their entire decision. Mm. You think, it's, when I was growing up, what my parents considered my talents were things I enjoyed doing and they allowed me to do them. So I had a childhood of play, serious play, play table tennis, play football, I would play when I'm tired, I come home and sleep. I am now a parent myself. I'm worried about how I will be in the future. So what I'm doing is what, I was, what was done to me. Expose my children to everything they consider talent. Yeah. Let them play at it and have fun at it. Where I need to be a parent and protect them, because it's the protection part. I do it. And I'll say, this is why we're doing it. I'm not denying you this, but if, you, if I think you're capable of handling it, or you're capable of handling yourself, you can do it. It's not I easy know for parents. people who can tell you categorically was because their parents forced them this path, mm -hmm. that they are, today they are successful. successful their father said, you know what, you're going to do engineering, exactly. you're going to do this, and today they have jobs in big companies. So when, when, when parents hear these stories, mm -hmm. they're also forced to say, stick to the education, stick yes. to the academics, stick mm -hmm. to it, because in future, at the end of the day, that's the only one that is guaranteed. Mm. Athletics is not guaranteed. Mm. Football is not guaranteed. Yes, Music talent is not guaranteed. People it's only it. it's time point. period. Yes, mm -hmm. there's a plenty time, time frame. The, nothing is guaranteed. There are no mm -hmm. absolutes yeah. in life. Mm -hmm. I've also seen people with first class today that they are begging. They are still looking for jobs. So it's not about that. Uh, what I'm worried about is um, there are two things. One, let us not live through our children. So mm. what I see is some parents who did not have a particular life now want to impose it on their children. Well, because I struggled to be a lawyer, I did not have that opportunity, you must read law. And they stand on it without paying attention to what the child wants to do and what the child needs. And it's okay to do something and fail. It doesn't necessarily mean that you are no longer successful because you failed at it. You keep trying it till you finally get it. Mm. So we must have that balance. The second one is, let's not allow our limiting beliefs based on the experiences we've had hold our children down. Because I tried it, it did not happen. Or because Labaja went this way and it didn't work. If my child goes this way, it will not work. The beautiful thing about this is we are more mature now. We have more knowledge than our parents have. And it's very important that we observe. Our job, like Nima mentioned, is to protect the child. So there are times you will say, mm -mm, I put my foot down, you will do this mm -hmm. for now. And but there are times time. also that you will relax and say, okay, let's try it your way and see mm -hmm. how that goes. Mm -hmm.